In this video, I'm gonna go over a pressurized water reactor using the new heat sinks which increases the core heat capacity of a reactor. So instead of the normal 10 million, we have 30 million thermal unit capacity and it also depletes fuel really really fast and produces decent power which is approximately 133 million Hg per second which is with Leviathan. So with the normal turbines, you are going to get around 155 mega Hg or million Hg per day. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. In order to make this design, I have selected a 6 chunk area. 1 chunk for the reactor, 2 chunks are for boilers and the turbine and 3 chunks in total for 4 cooling towers, the big cooling towers that is. So we start building this by coming up 4 up from the ground and then in the middle we place down a neutron source. Surrounding the neutron source will be 4 control rods and in front of the control rods will be 4 fuel rods. Now this reactor will have 32 fuel rods in total, the capacity. Surrounding these fuel rods will be more control rods and then on the intersecting points we place down four more fuel rods like this and then surrounding these fuel rods will be more control rods. So basically every control rod or oh sorry every fuel rod will be surrounded by control rods on all the six sides and this is the grid pattern that we are going for here. So once you have made this in these gaps place down two heat exchangers and two coolant channels and now in front of the or basically on the sides, place down the reflectors to close off the reactor. Now on the top, we add the control rods and same on the bottom, we add control rods to close the fuel rods on all of the six sides. Once that's done, this is layer one completed. Now on the very bottom, place down the reflectors where there are fuel rods, as building this later on will be troublesome. So right now, just place down the reflectors and now we can start working on more levels. So to increase the fuel rods basically, you just repeat what we did by extending it all up by one and building it all over again. So in the middle will be the neutron source, surrounding it will be the fuel rods, the control rods, basically the same thing that we did and don't forget to place down the heat exchangers and the coolant channels. And now we repeat this process two more times in order to get four levels. On each level, are 8 fuel rods so in total we end up with 32 fuel rods in this reactor. Now it's time to place down the heat exchangers and cooling towers, the coolant channel sorry. So on the bottom here place down 8 heat exchangers like this surrounding the neutron source and on the top here place down 8 coolant channels. We want equal number of heat exchangers and coolant channels and as this reactor is symmetric we can actually have that. Now in the middle here we have 8 slots so 4 of them will be filled with the heat exchanger and 4 of them will be filled with coolant channels like this. Now that we have placed equal numbers here it's time to place down coolant channels on the top. So make a 3x3 three three like this and then also place them on the sides like this. So in total we will end up with a 5x5 five five on the very top like this and I know I missed all of the reflectors here so let me just place them real quick. Once that's done we can now repeat this process on the top which we did on the bottom placing the reflectors to close off this reactor and placing down the pressurized vessel or the PWR pressure vessels. On the bottom we do the same thing but this time with the heat exchangers not with the coolant channels because coolant channels are already placed on the top. So this time we place down heat exchangers in a 3x3 three three pattern first and then covering all of the remaining spaces down below making a 5x5 five five base that looks something like this. And with that our top and the bottom are closed off. Now we have some spaces left equal number on all the sides so I'm going to fill them alternatively. So on two opposing sides we have the heat exchangers and the two opposing sides remaining we have coolant channels, 6 on each side like this. Now with that done, let's actually place down the heat sink. So there is going to be total 40 heat sinks on this design. Now if we read the description, a heat sink increases the heat capacity by 5% and I'm going to use 40 so that's going to increase the capacity by 300%. So instead of 10 million thermal units, we are going to have 30 million thermal units. So like this in a symmetric manner, place down 10 heat sinks on both the sides or oh sorry on all four sides like this and with that done 
all that's left now is to cover up this reactor with the pressure vessel so yeah this step is important but even if you miss any and when you go to assemble this reactor the controller will tell you where there are casings missing so yeah it's not that big of a deal if you miss any but make sure to cover every open channel up and once that's done the reactor will look something like this final steps now in order to complete this we add an inlet and outlet using the access ports and in order to place down the controller we need a neutron source so break the pressure vessel in the very middle place down a neutron source and in front place down a controller right clicking the controller will assemble this reactor which will have a unique design like this i think it looks pretty cool now as you can see our core heat capacity is 30 million thermal units instead of 10 million cause of the heat sinks that we placed now i'm going to rush through this as this is general for every reactor design there's going to be the heat exchanging heaters and we are going to run this reactor on liquid sodium because it has the highest thermal capacity i think out of every fluid that is available for the pwr so the heat exchangers will be set to 9999 the maximum number per tick and also set the pwr to liquid sodium fill it up with liquid sodium and now we can set up the turbine and the cooling towers so from the boilers we extend some steam pipes which go into the turbine and we are going to run this on normal steam no need for compression and with that now all we need is four big cooling towers in order to run this each cooling tower can process 200,000 millibuckets per second and we will produce roughly 780 ish so yeah four is enough i'm going to run some pipes for low pressure steam which will be coming out from the turbine like this and then connecting the water pipes which will go into the boiler and with this our closed loop will be completed so yeah no need for any water tanks in this setup so there goes our closed setup now in order to test this reactor all we need to do is first fill up the boilers with water and once the boilers are filled with water and the reactor has liquid sodium in it the fuel i'm going to use is highly enriched uranium 233 placing it in won't do anything because this reactor is right now shut down it can be completely shut down without pulling out the control rods and once you do pull the control rods out the reactor will start so with 20 percent out we are not producing a lot of power so with 40 percent still the heat is not nearly enough with 60 we start reaching in the orange category and close to 100 million hg per second now we pull out by 70 percent which will be like in the red category so the reactor is running very hot and we are depleting fuel really really fast now and we are close to a maximum power that we are going to get out of this design right now which is at 77 percent control rods out with this we will max out or nearly max out both of the heat exchanging heaters and the power will be 133.38 mega hg per sec which could have been 155 but for that we needed to use what 39 industrial steam turbines which is a lot of space so yeah and with the depleted uranium 233 you can get uranium 235 and also plutonium 238 so yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did drop a like and also subscribe to the channel peace out my guys stay safe